So within the past year, we all know what happened in 2020. We've all had to find creative ways to stay creative within the pandemic. So if you have been a photographer for a while and you've mainly shot digital, for me especially, I decided to get into film photography and I decided to pick up a 35 millimeter camera, which I've done already in the past. And the link is right up here if you'd like to check that video out. Shameless plug. But if you're like me, you like to try new things, then, you know, why not pick up a new camera and stay creative and just challenge yourself within the photography field. So in today's video, we're gonna get into a year in review of film photography, specifically 35 millimeter photography. And nonetheless, we will get into the pros, the cons and everything in between. So let's get into it. What's going on everybody? My name is Curtis Peak, and thank you all for those of you who have been subscribing. I see you and I know that it's been a little, it's been a couple months since I've actually uploaded a video. <laughs> but I am back and we are ready to get these videos out for you and can't wait for more content to be shared on this channel. But thank you all for sticking around. I truly appreciate it. When everything went into lockdown, personally for me, I was struggling because for one, I also did portrait photography mainly on digital cameras and there wasn't a lot of interactions obviously within the lockdowns and everything that happened in 2020. I wanted to challenge myself and pick up a new camera. So. Essentially, I went on to eBay like any film photographer does, and we go into the used section of the film cameras, and I decided to pick up a 35 mil because I wanted to get into film photography and just challenge myself and just try it out, and I've never tried it before anyway. So actually, where is my film camera? Can I just, can you pop it up right here, please? Editor, that'd be awesome. Well, thank you, editor. Awesome, yes, this is what I've been looking for. The camera that I picked up that I've already reviewed and talked about in the beginning, uh, like, like this is my, back in my first video. Like, so I was very fortunate enough to get this Canon A1 35 millimeter camera that is really easy to use. It is a part of the AE-1 family. So this was, I think this was the first one that came out and then the AE came out later. I was lucky enough to get this because it is in mint condition. Unfortunately, I don't have the rubberized viewfinder, but you know, you can buy that separately. And then plus I don't have the battery shield right here that comes into place that you can screw off and then you can open up the battery compartment. I will get that later. And of course you can also get um, an extended battery as well so which helps out with the battery life i got into 35 millimeter photography and it has taught me a lot so i will get into the pros first so honestly the first pro that i love about this is how easy it is to just kind of just get into it of course you're going to need to look into the user manual just getting into film photography in general for beginners highly recommend getting this one because it's easy to use easy to pick up and of course easy to learn. So that's one thing that I loved about getting to know this camera. It is just very intuitive and of course everything is mechanical. It does take one battery. The batteries again, if you're thinking about getting one, I will link everything below. So, you know, just so you know, it's all there for you. I will help you out. The second pro when it comes to film photography, especially in 35 millimeter photography and you're just getting into it, I would say that it challenges you in a good way to think about your shots. So it obviously slows down the process. If you've ever watched Willem Verbeck, he does a great breakdown of how slow and meticulous but enjoyable it can be when it comes to film photography. It really made me think, in my opinion and my experience, that it's really gotten down to just like, okay, what am I going to shoot today? Where am I going out? What haven't I shot yet? What do I want to shoot in the future? So it really made me think about, okay, so like I'm going to travel to LA, for example. I want to shoot around Santa Monica or I want to do some cityscape view or more of like the neighborhoods that are around there. It really made me slow down my process because because when I'd be out in photo shoots and doing, you know, product photography, whatever, it'd be snap, 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 snap. <laughs> you know, <laughs> of guns of just like shooting high volumes of photos because I know one of them is gonna be amazing. And that's just how we think, especially in this digital age, we just offload photos onto our hard drives, SSD drives, upload it within seconds, offload it and wipe it within seconds and you're all, you're good to go. Obviously that saves you a lot of money, but we'll get into that later in the video. It's a good way of practicing and getting down your compositions within film photography. And it makes you really think about what shots you wanna take on each set of roll and each square in each photo. So that is something I highly, highly recommend when it comes to uh, film photography. And especially if you love photography, 
highly recommend getting into this. The third pro I would say about when it comes, I'll combine this a little bit. So I would say that when it comes to loading on the film roll, it's just such a cool experience when <laughs> compared to loading in an SD card because it's just like, you know, boop, you pop it in, right? Easy, close the compartment and then you're done. You're ready to go and that's just it. But when it comes to loading in the film and just meticulously dragging like the 35 mil roll of film on the side and just the process of loading that film into the advanced lever and then you pull it and then you do a fire off a couple shots because of course they're gonna be blanks and then you get into the real deal and you can close the compartment the film back and you're ready to go so it's awesome and it's like a really for me especially if you haven't dealt with film yet and you've seen your friends do it or whatever it's a really cool process and it's definitely a definitely refreshing one because it's just different and it's just a refreshing way of loading in like photos you know and then of course, when you're trying to pull it back, you do the winder and you're winding everything back and then boom, you're done. You're done with that roll. You can pop it back out. Everything's good and you can ship it off to your local film store and they can just develop and scan for you. And the fourth pro that I would say about film photography is that there is a plethora of film stock that is out there, whether it comes with Fuji, Kodak, Cine Still, all of those guys, like amazing film stocks that they have available for you. You can buy them like from like $5 all the way up, you know, maybe a hundred, depending on if you want to get expired film and you're into that stuff. So, and you want to really experiment and you want to experiment on one roll of older Kodak roll that is expired, but it costs a lot of money because they don't obviously produce that anymore. Rest in peace to Fuji Pro 400H. And uh, I always want to try that. And I think it was earlier this year that it just stopped being developed. And then all these, everyone, the eBay scalpers just went on and just sold it for hundreds of dollars. And I, I tried to go to my local film store and unfortunately they did not have it and I was too late to get it so I was really sad but anyways there is a plethora of film stocks you can try from you know the cheapest of like color plus Kodak even Fujifilm has a lot of cheaper options all the way going up to pro where it's Portra 400 and you've got Portra 800 you got Cine still all of those guys really great film stocks and I highly recommend just trying each one out and see what you like. Once they are scanned and developed, you can always load that back up in the Lightroom and just tweak it just a little bit to your liking and then ship it out to the internet and everyone can see your photos. Now let's move on to the cons. So unfortunately, the biggest thing I think everyone is a little skeptical about and especially when it comes to obviously finding a film camera in general, it can be a little daunting and hard and of course it can be expensive. So nowadays, since the film photography craze has really exploded, of course, everyone is allowed to get into everything, but it's just the way of nature. When it comes to things like when things go viral, everyone's gonna start getting it, whether it be a product, you know, a service, whatever it may be, things are gonna skyrocket. That's what happens to film cameras, film stocks, and it's just the way of nature now. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it is a little pricey to get into this field, and especially when it comes to you just want to be a hobbyist and you just want to like dip your feet and just try it here and there. I will link below both affordable and then more of the expensive roles all down in the description. Just letting you guys know if you're still watching this video, it's all down there. Links are below. So I wanted to be transparent when it comes to finding cameras and especially sometimes you can get scammed, unfortunately, especially when it comes to eBay and sometimes the cameras don't come up you know, the way they are. Unfortunately, try to get a good deal and then it's not a good deal. And then you're like, oh my God, why did I spend that money? And then you can't get money back. And there's just a bunch of things that's wrong with, you know, when it comes to buying film cameras and, you know, film stock. I don't, I personally haven't had that experience, you know, knock on wood, not yet. Just transparency. I want you to make sure that, you know, make sure you know what you're looking for, making sure that the dealer is legit and making sure that, you know, the photos come out. And if you need to ask for additional photos, additional, you know, information from them, highly recommend just asking. It doesn't hurt to ask. So definitely recommend personal messaging them so you don't get any sort of, you know, suspiciousness or like scams. And especially if, if it's too good to be true of the deal, then it might be too good to be true because I have had instances like that where I'm like, oh, this medium format camera is only like $300, but then like most of the prices are like six, around five to 600. So 
Hmm, you know, just, just for warning, but unfortunately the stock market of film photography has gone up significantly. So for example, like I said in the beginning of the video, this camera has gone up in price. And especially when it comes to having a mint version, you can find one for, I think the lowest is 200. I believe I will put screenshots up just in case you guys need to see proof or any of the links, whatever. Unfortunately, some of these Canon 35 millimeter uh, cameras, the A1, the AE1, any of the Pentax, I mean, you can find them for maybe 70, depending on how the dealer sells it or if there's something wrong with it or if it's more scratches, more dents. It all depends on the you know condition of the item obviously. So I wanted a huge, I'm sorry I went on a tangent there, but you know, just the transparency of just buying these cameras and getting into this field in general. And unfortunately that there are some film stocks that have gone, like I said, the manufacturer stopped producing them and they skyrocket and then people keep them and then they want to sell it for way more money because it's not being produced anymore so then it's more rare and it's just like you know it's this whole cycle of just buying and it, it can run you up a lot of money especially when it comes to buying film stock like portrait 400 buying a pack of like the five it can run you 60 dollars, and that's not always awesome for everyone to hear but at least you're gonna get a lot of nice shots and you can try out new film stock but of course i will again like i said i will link everything below anything affordable so i would definitely recommend doing color plus or gold kodak amazing those are my personal favorites especially when it comes to cheap affordable film rolls definitely recommend those two rolls and i'll link also vulan's video he did a video on color plus and gold so I would recommend that as well. And when it comes to scanning and developing, it does cost a little bit to get it scanned and developed, obviously. So it depends on um, some of these services. Like for example, I love the darkroom service. They do a great job, especially for me. I have yet to do my own scanning and developing, but that will be coming to a future thing because that can be costly as well. But I mean, if you're really down and you love being in like trying new things and you want to just get into this medium full force. I would say start out slow. Don't go too fast yet because I wanted to get the scanner, get the film developing. You know, what if I didn't like it? So that's why I just chose a cheap 35 millimeter film camera, some cheap film stock and just tried it out and then sent it out to the dark room, which they're like neighborly. So they're pretty close to me. And I just fell in love. I, that's why I love it. And it's, amazing seeing what you can do with film photography and it's like traveling back in time it's like it it's really cool seeing how photographers used to do it back in the day it's a really cool process and i highly recommend anybody getting into and just it, or even if you think like i said if you're thinking about getting into this field in general highly highly recommend it just do it even if it comes down to just buying a disposable film camera just do it get it processed through costco cvs walgreens whatever it may be and you'll be surprised what you can come up with so what is the consensus of film photography? So film photography for me, and especially this past year, it has really done a number on my creative process. And when it, especially when it comes to meticulously looking at photos and what I wanna shoot, the compositions, and everything that I've learned from when it comes to, you know, money mistakes, buying some film stock, and it's like, okay, I have to think about, you know, how much I have to spend to get it developed and all that stuff. but. Besides the point, I've just fallen in love with it and that's all that matters to me. So if I love it, then I know that I like it. Whether you're thinking about doing it, just try it. And it, even if it comes down to buying a disposable film camera, that is probably the cheapest option and it's the first step to getting into film photography. So I would highly recommend trying that out first, then step up to the big boys of the 35 millimeters and then go up to medium. And if you wanna really get into it and you're insanely in love with it, get scanners, get film developing chemicals and go ahead and do it at home, scan it at home and just try it. And if you haven't yet, check out Twitter's photo community on Twitter, like they are amazing people. And if you are looking for a community besides Instagram, because they're just a video platform for some reason, definitely recommend getting into the Twitter photo community. You can hit me up at Curtis Peak on Twitter and just follow me and I'll follow you back. And let's, you can always chat with me there. Uh, just go ahead and link is all in the description. All the links to the film cameras, the affordable film stocks, everything is going to be listed all below. And thank you again so much for watching. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 200. We are halfway there, guys. Thank you so much for who has stuck around with me since the beginning. So thank you so much. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.